Now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. Inside a tiny engineer's shack at a uranium mine near the village of Kutu in the Belgian Congo, two white men sit in pitch darkness watching, watching the natives outside dressed in the skins and claws of leopards and panthers as they writhe and turn in the firelight to the age-old rhythm of the Congo drums, the rhythm of death. I tell you, Dubeck, I don't like it. Those devils are working themselves up to no good out there. Oui, I know what you mean, mon ami. And after what happened at Bosoko. Yeah, and at Jolu and Ikela. But what can we do about it? After Wait, all, look. Oh, yes, I see. They wave now the spears like a dance of war. What do you mean, spears? Those are guns. Guns? C'est impossible. Do you see the glint of them in the firelight? But how could they have guns? I don't know. And I'm not going to stick around to find out. Guns like a dojo. Come on, we've got to get out of here while we're still in one piece. But where? Behind us is the jungle. And in front? <gasps> Listen to them. I'll chance it through the jungle. Here, help me with this window. <laughs> now, if we can make it to the river in the old power boat, we can... <gasps> Do back. Fight, mon ami. You are hurt. Go on. Keep going. Run for it. No, I cannot leave. Thurston. Ken Thurston. What? What? New York. Thurston. The man called... Fred! Fred! Just who is this Dubeck, Ken? Well, all, all I know about him is what he says in his letter, Chief, that he was associated with Fred Stevenson in the mining operation in the Congo. Hmm, Stevenson, yeah. And apparently Fred told him to contact me just before he died. You remember Fred? Helped us out in that Brazilian copper setup. Oh, of course. Top-notch mining engineer, wasn't he? That's right. Oh, that's too bad. But what is he doing in Africa? He's working as mine supervisor for an outfit called Congo Uranium Limited, a Belgian-American-British combine licensed under a Belgian government permit. Oh. They've been uh, shipping out a lot of high-grade ore... Most of it directly to Oak Ridge. Oh, well... According to Dubeck, to, 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 to four of the company's five major installations have been forced to shut down because of local opposition, strikes, and native raids. Oh, yeah. I guess that's what's apt to happen when civilization starts to cramp the style of the petty native chiefs and witch doctors. Mm, I wish I could be sure that's all that's causing this trouble. I don't get you, Ken. Suppose some foreign power were interested in cutting down our supply of atomic weapons. Why wouldn't they stop it at the source by stirring up our supply of uranium ore? Yeah. A clever agent who really knows those natives could make a real play on their superstitions, their taboos, and their magic. Ken, I'll have Miss Brooks contact Sabina Airlines right away and get you on the first plane for Leopoldville. Um, already done. Hmm? Well, then I'll cable this Dubeck fellow that you're on your way. Oh, I did that the minute I read his letter. So long, Chief. Send you a postcard. The Royal Albert offers little luxury, Monsieur Thurston, but it is the best we have in Leopoldville. Now, if you will come with me to the bar, uh, perhaps a vermouth cassis? Well, I'll uh, settle a dry martini with an onion. C'est bon. But uh, our bartender, Galou, is a full-blooded Congo tribesman. Galou? I do not think he will understand the uh, martini. However, let us sit down and try. Yes, let's. Ah, Galou, a vermouth cassis. Uh, a uh, martini avec l'onion pour Monsieur Thurston. What? Galou, you, you have a good memory, how are you? But, uh, Galou have good memory for good on me, Monsieur. Ah, martini avec You, You have been here before, Monsieur Thurston? Oh, a couple of times. Then perhaps you know what our trouble is all about. No, but I'd like to find out. Why not start a scratch, Rebecca? Then we start with the natives. The natives on whom we must depend to work the mines. But it may be you know them as well as I, monsieur. Go on, Dubeck. We have all thought of them as just uh, a sulky child 
Monsieur Jerry Pickens has often said... Jerry Pickens? Uh, yes, mm. uh, the what you call Cockney trader at uh, Lucala. Mm. He says they are nothing but children. Treat them that way and they are all right. And that is what I used to think myself until six weeks ago when the trouble started. Your letter said something about playing on their superstitions. Yes, we employed some 3,000 native workers. And one day, none of them reported for work. You mean no matter how much you offered them in trinkets and money, they wouldn't come back? It was as though some spell had been cast. Four of the mines were destroyed. The building is burned to the ground. I tell you, monsieur, when you sit in a tiny board shack and watch those devils twist and turn to the beat of those drums, the hysterical cries of the witch doctor, uh, it is hard to think you are not bewitched. Yeah, I can believe that. What about the witch doctor? Is it always the same one? I think so, for he always wears the same skin, that of the giant black leopard. Well, is he from one of the loyal tribes? Who knows? He might be from here or the Ivory Coast or Mozambique. He might even be a white man. Yeah. Or a woman. Who knows? You're back. You haven't told me how you managed to escape the night Fred Stevenson was shot. Both cases, Martini. Oh, fine. Here, um, I'll do. Ah, oh, merci, merci. Ah, Martini in the middle of the jungle, your friend. Huh? Must mm -hmm. be a very important man to deserve such a luxury, Gaspar. I should enjoy meeting him. Uh, Tanya Stevenson, Monsieur Thurston. How do you do? Tanya was a friend's wife. Oh, well, I can't tell you how sorry I... Thank you. Oh, oh please sit down. Well, won't you join us? Well, just for a moment. There... Thurston, I'm sure I heard Fred speak of you. Oh, but of course you're Ken Thurston from New York, isn't it? More or less. Whatever are you doing in Africa? Oh, I spend a lot of time just traveling around. Monsieur Dubeck has been kind enough to invite me to visit the mine at Lucala. Oh, what a coincidence. If you are leaving tomorrow night, we shall be on the same riverboat. Tanya, surely you are not going to Lucala? Oh, but of course, Gaspar. The company has been kind enough to offer me work as a bookkeeper. To carry on the work that Fred was doing. The work that cost him his life. And now, if you will excuse me, I must begin packing. Until later, Mr. Thurston. Uh. Goodbye, Gaspar. Ah, a man can never understand a woman. And he's a fool to try. Any woman do back or that one in particular? That one especially. While her husband was alive, she refused to go near the mines. She hated Africa and begged him to give up his job. She even threatened to divorce him if he would not. And now! Yeah. I see what you mean. Oh, hello, Mrs. Stevenson. Won't you call me Tanya? Tanya? Russian, isn't it? Why, yes. Quite Russian. Of course it. Oh, this trip up the river is really quite fascinating, isn't it? The jungle in the moonlight, the birds, the sound of the animals. Oh, fascinating. You really think so? Why, of course. I... Oh, I see. Gaspar has been telling you about me. Well... It is true. I despise the Congo. Everything about it. It is a land of heat and disease and darkness and death. And yet you're staying here. Why? What choice is there? Fred left me no money. I have no friends, no family, nowhere to go. Not even a passport. Well, as the wife of an American citizen... I have made application, but everything takes time, Ken. So I have taken a job with the mining company. There was nothing else. Right now it might be a good idea. Take your mind off, Fred. Occupy your time. I shall hate it. The mines killed my husband. I warned him. Begged him to leave, but he would not listen. The mines kill everything they touch. Remember that, Kim. Don't stay at Lucala. Go back to America as quickly as you can. Uh the devil's there. Hmm? Sounds like a... Yes, it's a Geiger counter. Oh, yes, one of the passengers. Hmm? A silly little man who says he's looking for uranium. Oh, no. Excuse me, Tanya. You won't forget what I told you. No, I won't forget. 
All right, Pagan. Oh, hello, Mr. X. What are you doing on this boat? Well, I've been riding up and down this river for the past ten days waiting for you. I know every nick and cranny. Uh. I was visiting my cousin in Brazzaville when I heard about the trouble in the uranium mines. <laughs> so I said to myself, I said, Mr. X will be turning up and needing my expert assistance. No, thanks. But it won't cost you a thing. Well, maybe just a fare back to United States. No dice, Pagan. Huh? All right, all right. If that's the way you feel, I'll go along for free. It isn't that as though I have broke or something. <laughs> well, when 10,000 smackers ride in my lap... 10,000 what? Sure, didn't you know? That's what you get for finding a uranium mine. What do you think I rented this gadget for? Any uranium found here belongs to the Belgian government. But, but they can't do that to me, Mr. Rush. It's, it's an American. Good morning, Monsieur Foster. Oh, hello, Dubec. We ought to be getting to Lucalda pretty soon, haven't we? Yes. The village is just around the next bend. But from there to the mine is nearly a six-hour trip. I see. Quebec. Yes? Is that the village up ahead? Why, yes, it... <gasps> Monsieur Thurston, that smoke! There must be a fire. There was a fire. What? Lucalda's been burned to the ground. <laughs> This must have been the trading post right about here. Sure. There's what's left of the sign. Jerry Pickens, proprietor. Now, you see what I was talking about in the boat, Ken. The mines bring nothing but destruction and death to everyone. Uh, now, here comes Dubec. Maybe he's found out what happened. Who's that character with him? And what's he wearing all that paint on his face for? Those markings show his tribal rank. Huh? It is as I expected. The witch doctor, he roused the tribe to another frenzy. They attacked the village and burned it. The natives who lived here have fled to the hills. What about the trader, Pickens? Oh, how stupid of me. I had almost forgotten. Embo, where was Mr. Pickens last night? Him go up river last morning. Not be here. He owns another trading post at the next village. He must have been staying there. I picked a good night to be somewhere else. Embo, did you see the raid? Hear drum, see fire come down from mine. Good for you. And the witch doctor, did you see him too? Not see face. See black leopard skin. Ah, yeah. Well, let's go look at the mine. If we are to arrive before dark, we must leave at once. Embo, bring Mrs. Stevenson's luggage. Dear Juana, Embo, follow. You bet. How long has Embo worked for you? Perhaps uh, six months. Why? Oh, it's strange that he stays loyal while all the other natives are running off. Especially when he's of such high rank. High rank? What do you mean? Oh, that red line across his forehead and the way his hair's cut. Yes? They indicate that our friend Embo is a tribal chieftain. With the powers of a king among his people. What? Are you sure? Yeah. I'd say we have a very important man carrying luggage for us. Do we have to keep going so fast, Mr. Thurston? We've been walking all day and I'm getting tired. You invited yourself on this safari, Pig, huh? I don't like that Ember character behind us, neither. He looks like he would double-cross his own grandmother for a half a buck. Hello! Hello! Hold on a minute! Jerry Pickens. Oh. I've been trying to catch up with you chaps all day. Oh, hello, Mrs. Stevenson. I heard you was coming up to work at the mine. Sorry. I don't believe I've had the pleasure of meeting you, sir. This is Ken Thurston, Jerry Pickens. My pleasure, sir. Surely we've met before, maybe at uh, Leopardville. Oh, I don't think so, Mr. Thurston. At least it ain't likely. Ain't been there for the last six months. Spends all my time trying to keep my trading posts running. <laughs> Not that it's done me much good. Mm. I am most sorry about the fire at Lucala, Mr. Pickens. We saw what has happened. I oh, ain't you to cry in shame. There's not five shillings of salvage left... I just takes one look and decides to hightail it off to you. How did you find out where we were? Some of the natives come sneaking back. They've been watching you from the hills and tipped me off. I practically had to run all the way to catch up. We, uh, we had better move on. It will soon be dark. Embo! Dio. Embo lead way now. If that won't be necessary. Embo, we... Let's see in dark. Embo will lead way. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, whatever you like. But we must hurry. Hey, Mr. Thurston, what's that noise? Talking drums, Pagan. The natives are sending some sort of message. Embo. Yes? What do the drums say? I, uh, not know. Of course you do. What do they say? I don't want to tell. Embo, answer Mr. Thurston's question. Drums say evil one in jungle, very evil, huh? destroy mine tonight. Destroy power of evil one. Evil one? What does that mean, Embo? Drum say, man called X. We will continue with the man called X in just a moment. Now act two of the man called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Velasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Ken Thurston has reached the uranium mine near the village of Lukala, deep in the Belgian Congo. In the distance, native drums reiterate their baleful message, and Ken knows that a leopard-skinned witch doctor who has roused the natives against the mines and focused their hate by witchcraft is waiting to kill him. This is the main administration building. It is of better construction than the others, but it is still only wood and straw. Oh, you hear? The drums have stopped. They will now prepare to attack us. How long would you say we have, Dubé? Oh, an hour, perhaps two hours, until the moon goes down. Are we just going to sit here and wait for them to kill us? She's got a point there. How about weapons, Dubé? At least we could give these blighters a taste of their own medicine. Yes, yes. The guns are hidden in the mine shaft beyond the compound. I took that precaution when I left for Leopoldville to meet Mr. Thurston. Good idea. Embo, bring us the rifles. Uh, never mind, Embo. I'll get them. I saw the shaft as we came in. They're on the first level. But you do not Come need... on, Pagan. Well, well, I... Uh... Come on! <sighs> so this is a uranium mine, eh? Well, maybe we ought to stop and take a few samples. Hey, maybe there is a billion dollars worth in here. Oh, shut up and flash that light over here. Well, what do you know? A pile of rifles, just like Mr. Debeck said. Yeah. Only one trouble, these guns are empty. How do you like that? What are we going to do now? I'll take these rifles to the others. You wait here for about five minutes and then join us in the administration building. Wait here? But, Mr. X, I don't You're like this... You're in one of the richest spots in the world, Pagan, so relax and enjoy it. You found the rifles, c'est bon. Here you are, Dubeck. Here, Pickens. What? Uh, ah, wait a minute here, Thurston. Hmm? Afraid this gun won't do much good. There ain't no bullets in it. Huh? No, no, in this one. We had a little trouble finding the cartridges, but Pagan will be along with them in a minute or two. No, it's not true. Shells are not... Go on, Embo. The shells aren't what? Oh, you mustn't pay no attention to him, Thurston. These natives don't know what they're talking Embo about. Embo knows what he's talking about. He got rid of the ammunition on somebody's orders. I do not understand. Whose orders? The witch doctor who wears a leopard skin. Thurston, I think you've got something there. If we only could get our hands on him. If we knew who he was... We what... do know who he is, Pickens. What do you mean, monsieur? Remember when we left the car and started for the mine? Embo followed us. But as soon as Pickens joined the group, Embo insisted on marching in the lead. Yes, I thought it strange at the time. It wasn't strange. The natives of the Congo tribe believe that it's wrong to walk in the footsteps of a witch doctor. They believe the witch doctor stamps down evil as he walks along. And anyone who touches his tracks will pick up that evil. That's why Embo wouldn't walk in back of Pickens. Pickens? <laughs> I'd heard about you, Mr. X. I heard you was plenty smart. But I didn't expect you to figure out things this fast. Not that it makes much difference, you see. This here pistol has got bullets in it. Huh, I'm sure it has. Amber, tell your tribe we've made prisoners of the evil spirits that's cursed your land. And we're going to bring them to quick justice. <laughs> Why are they keeping us in this hut, Mr. X? 
Well, I imagine they're preparing the fires, Big, huh? Fires? Yeah, these natives think that the only way an evil spirit can be destroyed is by flame. You mean if I ask what's cooking, the answer will be it's me? You come now. Everything ready. You really intend to burn us, Embo? Freddy hasn't got much choice, Thurston. Evil must be destroyed. Natives won't have it any other way. That's the native religion, I know that. But what about the preliminaries? Preliminaries? Sure. The accused is entitled to trial. Trial by poison. Huh? You've had all the trial you get, Mr. X. As witch doctor, I'm the only judge here. And I says you're guilty. What about it, Embo? If we really are evil ones, the trial will prove it. And if not... Him speak true. Old wise men always test by poison. I'm your wise man now, Embo. And I say that... Embo I... still chief. Embo say evil wants to have trial. Huh? You fix poison. Come. Now. All right, all right, but it'll only prove what I've been telling you all along. I don't get it, Mr. X. What's all this talk about poison? The natives who practice black magic... Black magic? ...believe in what they call trial by poison. Yes, I have heard of it. The accused person and several other members of the tribe drink a mixture concocted by the witch doctor. Then the guilty one falls to the ground in agony, while the others apparently feel no pain. What a trial. It don't make sense. Psychology, Pagan. Like all witchcraft. Say, you're right, Thurston. Sure. The so-called poison is just strong enough to cause a little nausea. But the guilty one exaggerates the sickness in his mind and thinks he's rarely been poisoned. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Mr. X. You know, I was afraid I might lose you. Not a chance of that, Pagan. You see, you'll have to drink the poison, too. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> The Jerry Pickens character sure looks like a fugitive from a nightmare, Mr. X. He even forgot to take the head of that leopard skin coat he's wearing. Yeah. But hey, why he's keeping dancing around that pot and scraping pieces of bark into that boiling water? It's not sanitary, and we got to drink it. That's the bark of the blood tree. These natives think it makes the poison I told you about. <laughs> Mr. X, if you don't mind, I don't feel very thirsty. Mr. Thurston... Blood water is ready. We are ready, Embo, and unafraid. For our hearts are free of evil doing, aren't they, Pagan? Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> you, Chief Blood Devil, you drink first. I, Chief, drink with you. And three elders from village. Uh, Wait, Embo. Uh, As the person on trial, it's my privilege to pick who must share the test with me. It's true. It's tribal law. Then I choose your witch doctor... Mr. Jerry Pickens. I? What? You're crazy. I makes the stuff. You drink it. This time you're going to drink it too. Oh, no, I'm not. You heard, Embo? It's the tribal law. Or are you afraid that my magic will turn out to be good? That you'll double up in pain from the evil inside you? Don't be ridiculous. Make him drink up, Embo. Let's get this over. How about it, Embo? You're chief and the law is the law. Embo, ask elders of tribe. Elders say which doctor drink or no make true medicine. All right, all right, but he takes his first. No. If you not evil, blood water no hurt, you drink first. No. No, I won't do it. You Go on, Jerry. You're an intelligent westerner. You know it's only the bark of a tree, isn't it? I tell you, I won't touch the stuff. Drink. Uh, no. no, no, no. I won't do it. You can't force me to. I... Get away from me. Drink. No. He dead. Yes, Embo. Your people can take off their leopard skins now and go back to the mines. The taboo is over. The evil spirit that cursed the jungle is gone. It's good, Wana Makubra. It's good. <laughs> Mr. X, that blood water sure finished off that Pickens character. You see, monsieur, why I tell you we must almost believe in this witchcraft? It wasn't witchcraft that killed Jerry Pickens, Quebec. The stuff in that cup smelled to me like potassium cyanide. What? Pickens realized that bark mixture wouldn't affect me because I knew what it was all about. And the test would prove me innocent. But Mr. X... He couldn't risk that. So he put some real poison in it. 
I knew all the time there wasn't any such a thing as black magic. Oh, but there is, Pega. Hmm? And not just in the jungles. It swept whole countries of the world. Wherever lies are repeated and repeated until ignorant men believe them, wherever peoples are deceived into hate and greed, there you have witchcraft. The most evil witchcraft of all. And only truth and faith and courage can destroy this false belief. Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, any kind of money would be important to Leon Belasco. I mean, pay Zelspeth. And I think you'll agree it's an important story, too. Especially in these days. So, join us, won't you, when next I return without a cold, I hope, as the man called Hex. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. The Man Called X is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Robert Libet and Frank Burt. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. On NBC.